You guys are the most serious Zoomers I've ever been in front of. <laughs> I don't know. Hunter was smiling before, but now all of a sudden she's Everybody. like deep in thought. You know, <laughs> I'm just tired and burnt. So <laughs> I'm tired, but I just think it's I think it's funny. You know, like nobody speaks. We're just like staring. <laughs> All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Chris looks like he's ready for takeoff. Ready, ready to go. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> I could use it. <laughs> All right. Are we missing Chris? Yeah. And is that it? I think she might be in the waiting room. Hold on. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> she wants to know if I got into the meeting yet. So maybe, <laughs> I don't know. There she is. Oh, Hunter said that her speakers are not working. Oh, okay. Hunter, right now it shows connecting to audio for you. Now it says you're muted. <laughs> oh, I try now. Oh, wait, no, never mind. No. But I could read your lips. That's how I knew to say no. <laughs> oh, now it says connected to audio, but then it says like IT and it has like a mute, like you're just muted. Guys, behave, please. Hmm. You know, we're what's going on? Okay. Too bad there's not a chat option. <laughs> right it's just weird because like it shows that hunter it shows you're connected but then it shows you're muted but then it looks like when you take your mute off it says connecting to audio it'll connect you and then like it lets go like right now it says connecting to audio yeah we don't need any information try again hunter Oh, it says say some. Now it looks connected. Yeah, it looks connected now. Can you hear us, you to... Hunter? No. No, I think I Connecting again. We lost Chris also. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
Echo, did Chris text you or anything? We lost Chris. You're muted, Echo. <laughs> uh, she said, did you get in the meeting yet? I said, yeah, we're here. And then she said, I don't see anything. And I said, we, you were here, then we lost you. <laughs> <laughs> she might have thought that we couldn't see her, so she got out to get back in. I don't know. I don't know. Shoot. And I wasn't going to speak that much so that it would be a faster meeting. <laughs> but then I took some notes. <laughs> Can Hunter hear us at all? Yes. She okay. Can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> we just can't hear her. That's all. <laughs> um, what time is it? Like seven oh eight or something like that. I think. Should, shall I wait? Seven oh six. Said she's trying to get back in and she saw nothing. That's a Chris. Oh, there we go. There she, there she is. is. She's coming back. <laughs> okay, I see you're coming in. <laughs> Here she is. There Chris, we go. can you hear us? Chris K, can you hear us? No. Hey, Chris, can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chris. We can see you. Or see us. That's weird. That is weird. That is weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She, oh, sees a, she sees a black screen with her reflection back at her. What? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's bizarre. But can you hear us, Chris? We, we can't hear her, though. Right. She but can you can us. hear us? Oh. Odd. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I see nothing. It's weird. Wow. We're, we're here. We are. If you swear. Okay, bye, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, um, I will start the meeting. Uh, I'll call, call the meeting. Parks and Recreation Commission, July 6, 2021, to order at 7.08 p.m. Um, ooh, number two, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I have a flag outside my window. So. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, David. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, of America, States, of America, States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands. For which it stands. For which it stands. One, nation, one nation. One nation. Under God. Under God indivisible, indivisible. With liberty, liberty, liberty and, and justice for all. for all. All right. Um, item number three, roll call. I'll do it. <laughs> Commissioner Kelly is here and Frazier. Commissioner Sutherland. I am here and I am currently in Stanwood, Michigan. Oh, um, Commissioner Hunt. I am here in Frazier. Excellent. Commissioner Rollins. I'm here in Fraser. <laughs> Commissioner Miller. Here in Fraser. And Commissioner Cook. Here in Fraser. Awesome. Um, item number four, approval of the agenda for July 6, 2021. Okay, I have a quick question before sure. there's any approvals. Um, in the minutes, it said that we were going to table items 8A and 8C until July, but then they're not on the agenda. Yeah, um, I spoke with Vincent and he told me not to put it on. Okay, not month, a problem. So. Okay, because I figured if anybody asked, I could give you a little <laughs> update, but okay, um, not a problem. We could do an update during your uh, commission members with concerns. Okay. All right. Um, well, and I make a motion to uh, approve the agenda for July's meeting. Okay. I'll second that. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Hunt, seconded by Commissioner Rollins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, item number five, approval of the minutes from June 1st, 
2021. Before we approve anything, uh, I'm sorry if they're a little messy and sloppy because my notes were sloppy. So, okay. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, I, well, so I have one comment. Sure, that's fine. Um, it's not anything about anything like that, but uh, for item 9B, um, it said Commissioner, uh, I wanted to maybe um, amend it to say Commissioner Hunt did not vote yay or nay, but abstained from the vote. Oh, you know what? I did have that, and I'm sorry. I meant to. Okay. I got distracted. I mean, and you so. can read him um, yeah, as you out of town. I just, yep. I don't want people to think I'm against it. It's just I no. keep it up, so I couldn't. Yeah, no problem. All. all right, I'll make that. Um. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with the amended nine B for I'm June 1st. Okay. Okay. Um, motion made by Commissioner Kelly is seconded by, was it Commissioner Cook? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Uh, I'm number six, volunteer group reports. I don't think we have anyone from Frazier First Booster Club. So <laughs> anyone know of any updates? No. Okay. All right. And item 6B, fix the fort group. I think they were starting up again, but I don't think oh. anyone's. Oh, Hunter's oh. got her <laughs> finger up. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. We can't, <laughs> we can't hear, so... <clears throat> and I can't do sign language, so me neither. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear. It's gonna be like the dating game. She's gonna write it down on a card, and we're gonna have to read it. Right. There you go. <laughs> okay. Flashcard says. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the match game, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or, or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think she said go ahead. <laughs> All right, you want me to move on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item number seven, uh, report on current events. Farmer's Market. Take it away, Dana. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, so first I want to give a huge shout out to Hunter who has been absolutely amazing with this Farmer's Market. She's taken on the brunt of the work and I cannot say enough how much I appreciate the effort that she's put in. Um, so I think we have right around 10 or so vendors right now. We're still waiting to hear back from a few. Um, I mean, it's, it's been going well. We haven't really gotten any bad feedback. I was thinking that, you know, we had talked earlier in the year about having a survey. So I was thinking that that might be a good idea to get a survey of all of the vendors. Um, because I have gotten some vendors asking questions about um, fees starting up again next year and what that's going to look like. And I just think that, you know, based on, uh, I did the Warren market last month too. And, you know, it's just something I've kind of learned is the vendors are the experts. So um, I was thinking I could maybe work on that, send it over to Hunter, um, see what she thinks. But I think getting some vendor feedback might be a good idea. Um, I had, we had our, our volunteer who's always there with us, Peyton Kalka. She um, asked about doing a kid's craft. So I did send an email to, uh, or I talked to Hunter about, they're like these little wooden bird houses. They're like a dollar fifty each. So we're working on getting that going. I don't think it's going to happen for this one, but it's probably going to happen for the next one. Um, Peyton won't be at this one anyway. She's out of town. So that actually kind of works because it was her brainchild. So that way we can do it in August. But if anybody else has any ideas for kids crafts or special events or anything, 
you know, please feel free to reach out to me, Hunter. Um, that would be awesome. And then, oh, Hunter, uh, Laura Lessich is trying to get in the meeting. It says she needs to be let in. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, at this market, we are going to have, my goodness, sorry, I keep getting messages from people asking if there's a meeting and asking for the link. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like breaking my train of thought. Um, we are going to have Mark uh, Ludke at this farmer's market. Uh, he's the local musician, uh, musician slash DJ. He has volunteered to come and do music and balloon animals. So that should be fun also. And that'll be in the gazebo. Um, and then I did have a question for Hunter, but I will table it and take it offline since I won't be able to hear her answer anyway. <laughs> so that's okay. It's not a big deal um hey that was all i had but seriously any feedback that any of you guys ever have on the farmer's market or ideas or you know volunteering for special events or anything like that i mean please feel free to reach out and let either hunter or myself know um we've gotten good feedback but you know the more the merrier so thank you dana You're welcome um, item number eight, discussion of new events, the food truck rally. Awesome. Okay, the food truck rally. We have, I have to say, Hunter has been great too because I'll email food trucks and they'll say they're interested and I send them to Hunter. Hunter sends out whatever she has to send out to get them um, to commit for the food truck rally. And as of right now, we have six food trucks committed and three that are we're waiting um, for them to get back to us to let us know if they are interested. Um, we're going to do it on Saturday, September 18th from 4 to 8 p.m. It'll be in the back parking lot of by the soccer fields is where we're going to set up. And I do have uh, Mike is going to come and play music too that night. And I know Hunter and I were talking about maybe setting up some cornhole boards out there too. So if people want to maybe play some cornhole while they're eating too, we might have that out there. Did um, you mean also, that Mark was going to play? Yeah, sorry, Mark. Yes. Okay. Just making sure for the notes. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Mark is going to play too. He already said he would do that. Um, we have, like I said, we'll have to set up some picnic tables out there. Um, what else do we have? I think that's about it, but we're going to do it from 4 to 8 p.m. on the back half of like the field back in that back parking lot. Um, I think it's coming along nicely. Um, and you say the parking, the parking lot off of 14 mile, right? Yep, it's off of 14 okay. mile and like there's the main parking lot that's by the baseball diamonds. And then there's a shed and if you go behind the shed, there's another separate parking lot. Okay. So that way it won't interfere with cars coming and going and it'll be its own little area. That sounds cool. It's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. I just want to say I can speak now. Yay! Hey. I have two computers going. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I wish um, I could see. <laughs> so if you want me to go and talk back and talk about anything that I couldn't talk about when I didn't have sound, <laughs> I will. Um, I don't know what I missed, honestly. I was trying to figure this out. <laughs> um, when Commissioner Cook is done we can i'll i'll circle back to that so okay sorry <laughs> no, I, think, I think that's it any questions any concerns i don't think so i'm yeah. really excited for something fun. Yeah. just a quick Thank question you. curious what what are the food vendors you have committed six, you have we six have pam's the pam sweet treats ice cream truck we have real taco express we have batter up waffle company we have mm -hmm. estes greek street food we have barbecue daddy and we have twisted barbecue. Wow. And then we have um, the wizard food truck and motor. Oh yes, the wizard food truck. Food. And I have to say the wizard food truck last Wednesday night at the concert in the park for St. Clair Shores was, their line was out the door for them. Wow. Awesome. Cool. Nice. Very good. Mm -hmm. Good selection. Good job. Yep. So I think there'll be a, a little bit of everything for everybody mm -hmm. there. That's great. Awesome. I'll save up some money so I can buy something from every truck. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, all right, Hunter, did you have any updates from the Fix Support Group or Fraser for Sister Club? Um, so Vince gave me notes since he's not okay. here okay. in the meeting. So um, 6A, he said um, he has an upcoming meeting with uh, the Lions Club and the DPW um, to go over the carnival and fireworks. Mm. And then for Fort Fraser helpers, um, the hand painting at Fort Fraser. Um, Vince has another meeting with the DPW and uh, Dana and Steve to go over the proposed volunteer work. Prayers, um, not eight. Southern. Prayers, not Sutherland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, did we get to nine? Nope, not yet. That's actually okay. the one we're doing right. Actually, it's, we'll do it right now. Okay. <laughs> um, um, item number nine, report of Parks and Recreation. Um, so Pompo Park, the path, uh, the pathway is being repaved this week. Um, and then Somerset Park, there was uh, damage. The pathway was damaged. It needed to be repaired. Um, let me see. And then Boris and Harrington and Meadows, all the equipment um, has been removed. And then they said it should be, sorry, I'm trying to read his handwriting. <laughs> um, I think it said installed and complete within the next two weeks. And then it goes in order of Boris Harrington and then Meadows. And then the pavilion at Meadows will not be completed until early September. And then, Do you have any update on the signs, Hunter, even at Somerset or Pompo? Um, the signs, no. Okay. The, the signs are actually on uh, a council meeting uh, in the future. So we don't, we don't have it. I don't believe it's on the agenda for Thursday. I think it will be on maybe the next agenda. So the signs are still kind of an ongoing thing. We just, we're, we're, we're working on making them all consistent, uniform and getting the right bids and getting the right prices. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's fair. He said that, um, well, the, Graffiti and stuff at Somerset Park was taken care of by the DPW. And then um, the strategy for recreation and future activities um, is going to be between Vince in August with the city manager and council. So that's his. Oh. Okay. And then the budget. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the budget in the supplies, there's 3,500. And then in the programming um, for farmer's market, there's $1,750. And then um, the recreation revolving funds, there's 3,000. Com community promotion, uh, 12,000. And then programming, 12,000. That's the total parks and recreation budget for 2021? Yes. That's the list. Uh, okay. Um, okay. I would, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Commissioner. I have a question. Yeah. Um, it, goes with the Parks and Recreation, and I think Mr. Winowicki can um, can answer it. My question is, so these three three parks, in, they were in the five-year plan. Were they the last updates to be completed? And does that mean the five-year plan is complete? Or are there things left in the five-year plan that will roll over to the next time? There will be more rolling over. Uh, this, this was just trying to get as much done as we could okay. with the funds that we have available. Okay. So there will be more rolling into future. And with the announcement today and, and still to be determined how much the city will benefit from this, but the governor announced, I think today that um, she's allotting, I think another $150 million 
towards uh, renovations of community parks. Wow. So that, that remains to be seen. Uh, if, if we're going to benefit from any part of that, uh, we don't know yet. Okay. All right. Well, my, my question specifically would be for Blanky Park. Was that one worked on? Blanky was not included in this round. We were actually working off of the old stats and the old information from the previous five-year plan. From so the five-year plan that they had some updates for Blanky and they weren't done. So I didn't, so they'll be the next time maybe then? Correct. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm really looking really for parking. <laughs> yeah. There. That's what I was looking for, so. We, I just, <clears throat> when we met earlier this year too, to go over um, the, the three parks, Boris, Meadows, and, and Harrington, uh, we also talked about the possibility of creating a gravel type parking lot at Boris because there's a driveway oh, cut there's a driveway cut right off of 14 mile mm -hmm. and the city does own a large portion of that driveway cut. Perfect. Um, so it, it's something we're considering moving forward, going, going forward, but <clears throat> because the, the, the Creek runs through there, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we have the appropriate setbacks. And if we, if we do put a gravel lot there and parking blocks and so on, we have to make sure that we have to, uh, comply with all the DNR requirements. So th that's going to take a little bit more investigation, but uh, so that, that we, we hope that with the renovation of that park and the potential increase for parking off of 14 mile, that that will increase activity of that park as well. Okay, it, it's just something okay. we discussed early on in the year. <laughs> it's the only snowy day in May, I think we were out there looking around and <laughs> Okay, thanks. Commissioner Sutherland. Yeah, I'm interested that um, that parking lot is gonna be redone because I remember that snowy day, I was out there too. And I, I thought that that was, um, that got shot down. So I'm glad to hear that that will be happening. Um, so I just wanna make sure that I'm asking a clarifying question here because I feel like I might really be missing something. So based on the numbers that Hunter gave a moment ago, it seemed like $30,000 is the parks and recreation budget for the year. Am I around ballpark? Is that accurate? I mean, I can repeat the numbers. I don't have a total. I didn't add them up, honestly. Yeah, I was just kind of jotting down quickly. The, the reason why I'm asking that clarifying question is because I remember having a conversation at the bunny event with Vince about the remaining funds that weren't used in 2020. And that was 150,000. So I'm wondering how we go from $150,000 unused funds in 2020 to a $30,000 total budget in 2021. Yeah, the total I have is uh, $32,250. Um, I am not sure about the remaining balance i'm not sure how it works because i know it goes by fiscal year so i am so not... then okay no i right I and that it was follow... it was fiscal year I, that that hundred and fifty thousand dollar figure was unused for fiscal year 2020 um i'm just thinking with a thirty two thousand dollar budget just kind of trying to off the you know top of my head thinking about what we might be able to do this year i mean doesn't sound like that would include opening the senior center or anything like that. I know that um, a minute ago was said that Vincent was going to meet with the new city manager and council to talk about, you know, what events are going to look like this year. But with that figure, it doesn't sound like much. So I'm glad to hear uh, Councilman Winnewicki say that there might be more funds coming for parks. Um, but I mean, we're going to have to make every penny count. And um, as a commission, we're going to have to get really creative if that's really the number that we're working with this year. So I just wanted to make sure that because it was so significantly less that there wasn't something I was missing. 
So he said that he can follow up with you guys regarding, um, I believe, the bu budget or last year's budget um, in an email since he's not here. But other than that, I am not sure. Okay. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. I'll let him know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. Um, 10 was other business interview for open seat, but I don't think we got any applications. <laughs> so I guess we'll keep looking. I <laughs> um, guess we're going to have to extend it until next month. So, hold on. I got to see. <sighs> Our meeting is what? August 3rd. Yeah. All right. Mm hmm um one two three that's what exactly do we have to have it for 30. i think sarah froze up yeah yeah sarah you froze up and cut out for a second oh there she is oh. do i do i need to make another motion i mean it's already been 30 days I, I, I think it would be appropriate to extend another 30 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if it was 30 days, that would bring us, we'd have to move our meeting to the 10th of August. That's what I was just looking at. I mean, would it have to be the 30 days or could we just keep it open until our meeting on August 3rd. Because it's already been up for 30 days. Right. Um, I believe you can. Okay. I, I don't have I don't have the luxury of having Don Denault right. <laughs> decipher this for us right now. But, but I think you can keep the posting open until the next meeting. Uh, in the hopes that you do get, you know, other applicants to apply. I think so too, because I don't think you're like restarting the clock. Right. And having it be another 30 days. Like it's already been posted for 30 days. Right. Like I think it has right. to be at least 30 days. Yeah. So, all right. Well, then I'll make a motion to extend the application period. The in, or for the open seat with the term ending December 2021. I'll second the motion okay. to leave the posting open for the seat ending this, what was it, December 2021? Yep. Um, motion made by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Sutherland. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, 11, citizen participation. Any citizens want to participate? <laughs> Hi, I'll, Laura. I'll take Hi, Laura. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, Laura Lessage, 15201 Fairview. A um, couple questions. I. It, I just got home from up north and I'm looking, I go, it's Tuesday, first Tuesday, was there a meeting? I went on the website, there's nothing there on the, um, like in progress or whatever, there's nothing to say there was an upcoming meeting. I did find the agenda, but the agenda out there did not have the Zoom information at all. It was just the agenda period. That's why I, and I apologize, I went to Dana Sutherland <laughs> to say, hey, is there a meeting? So um, somehow the communication that there's a meeting has to be clearer to our residents. I don't, and I didn't see anything out there on the social media webs, uh, groups enough, um, the city of Frazier, any of that too. So I didn't see anybody saying, hey, there's a meeting tonight or hey, there's a meeting next Tuesday. Let's get together and talk about our parks and rec department, et cetera. I think everyone just, forgot, whatever. So I apologize if I'm um, going on and on about it, but I think it's important that um, the city administration, I, I don't know if it's you, Hunter, or somebody in, that does the IT, 
to make sure that we have the information out there on our website and is also spread up, uh, out on the um, Facebook groups that so people can attend these meetings. Because you have a lot of things going on and I don't, nothing's out there to really tell everybody what's happening. And I appreciate the, the few posts I do see with um, Echo and um, Chris talking about the walks, um, kind of pushing uh, all, all of some of the other activities they're doing, but there's, you got things in the works and people need to be aware of all that, that's all. Um, the other thing I was wondering about is, uh, you mentioned about the parks and uh, the five-year plan. The five-year plan is a wish list. It's a continuously updated document you don't just go to the five-year plan and say, we're gonna do this, this, this. You, and in fact, the parks that you are upgrading today, there's other things in there that can be added to it. So that's, you know, it's a continuous uh, updating document. And you, when you look at it and you guys will be reviewing it this year to update it for the next five years, add more, add everything else you'd wanna do to this park, to the parks. Um, and as well as you know, sidewalks, parking lots, all that kind of stuff. You just keep adding to it. You don't just go to the park, the list and start checking things off. That's not how it works. Um, and the other thing is I'm a little disappointed in that the, the three parks that we are updating this year, that all the equipment was pulled out a month ago and we have to wait another few weeks, another month, I would say, for anything to be put in there. The whole summer, is these parks are empty. And um, so people are having to go elsewhere. Um, me, the closest parks for me to go to are in Sterling Heights now. I can't just walk to McKinley easily with two little kids. I have to get in a car and that's even more difficult to do. So I'm disappointed that they did that. And number two, um, I understand the signs may be on a list to be consistent, but those signs, Somerset and Pompo, were talked about way back last year, and there's still no signs. Um, I think it's unfortunate that they have to be delayed just so that everybody could be a part of it. It, it's, it should be all consistent. Yes, I get that, but this has been way too long on trying to get the bibs in place. It's been over three months, I would say. Three months when you first started talking about all this stuff. And that's just way too long. Um, and that's about all I have to say about that. And I, I wanna say too that for your next um, uh, position that's open, you just keep it open until you fill it. You don't have to keep adding 30 days, just keep it open and you need to advertise it. I don't think I've saw anything on the social media website about a new, an opening out there. I see it on the website, but that's not where people are going. They're looking at the Facebook groups. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Uh, I think I have, I think that's enough <laughs> for now. As I think of things, I will uh, certainly reach out to everybody, but um, keep it up and um, we'll keep moving forward. And I think there's a little bit more money in the budget than $32,000. My guess it's over the 300 mark, $300,000 for the year. That's so, better. So I think you should double check with Vince and, and look at the budget. I mean, the budget should be out there, right? On the website, you can see there's got to be a lot more money. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Laura. So I know that the agenda today was, I it was posted on Friday without the link and I, emailed Vince today and at I think it was 235 I got an email saying that it was reposted to the website with the link um, so I don't know how it did <laughs> um, I did I, not see it I looked there okay. were three different versions that were not there and okay. you weren't the only one Laura who reached yeah, I know. out to okay. me too Thank so it, it's not just you yeah um Sarah right. <clears throat> sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'd, I'd like to address a couple of things that I'll, I'll leave the council hat on for right now, and then I'll take off the council hat and go into a citizen thing. But on the council part of it, as far as the 
parks, um, the removal of the equipment. Um, when, when the purchase orders were signed, and when it was planned to do the parks, a very unfortunate event occurred that there was a plant fire at the equipment factory. And so that was an unforeseen thing that none of us could have ever anticipated. So we went ahead with the plans to remove the, the equipment. And yes, it's unfortunate that things have been removed and that the parks are, are essentially bare right now, but we're working with the vendor and we're working to get it uh, expedited as soon as we possibly can. So, you know, that was just a unforeseen, unfortunate event thing. And it's not something that we went ahead and removed everything and then decided, okay, we're just not gonna put it in. So that's, that's, that's to address that. As far as the signs, the signs were not ever handled properly in the beginning and they're being handled properly now. And, and so I just wanna say that, um, yes, there's been a two or three month delay, but this goes beyond two or three months because it was never handled properly. So we're handling it properly. We're gonna get them consistent. We're gonna look good. We're gonna represent the city and everything's gonna be great. Putting on a different hat now as a citizen, uh, I'd like to poll all of you commissioners to find out if there's an interest in a golf disc park. There's a piece of land that the city owns off of Hayes that we've had interest from a couple of residents. We've gotten some preliminary rough numbers of uh, clearing portions of the land to be able to uh, and when I say off of Hayes, we'll say between 14 and 15 mile road. Um, we've gotten some preliminary numbers of the tune of somewhere around 50 or $60,000 to put in some parking and put in the apparatus needed for a golf disc park. I don't know if you are all familiar with how that kind of thing works, but it seems to be pretty popular. Um, we have, we have a small cottage up in the northern uh, crook of the thumb uh, in, in Michigan between Mayville and Cairo. And there's a park there called Omer Park and it gets a lot of activity for a golf disc. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's really kind of a unique thing. I've never delved into it, but I know a lot of people from millennials all the way to Gen X that are very interested in it. So I don't know if you have any uh, interest in that, but it's something that was brought up that could be uh, a pretty quick thing to do and install um, this this new area. So I'm just just getting some interest mm -hmm. to see where you guys uh, where you guys what what do you guys think about that, Commissioner Cook? I have a question. So how big is this piece of land? Because I know we were just up at our cottage up in Lexington. And we were walking through the woods and they have a disc golf through the woods there. And there was probably 10 kids playing, playing this disc golf. We had to kind of watch where we were walking because they were throwing these Frisbees everywhere. So is it a large piece of land that we're looking at to set this up? Is there going to be different holes? Is it going to be, um, you know, what are we looking at? I don't know the size or the acreage, uh, but it, it, it is a, a fairly considerable part that would actually kind of back up to a section of meadows. And um, I, 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 unfortunately, I don't have the acreage, so I don't know. But uh, from, from what I understand, the, the initial uh, interest from a resident thought it would be um, sizable enough and more than adequate to handle, um, handle that type of installation. I, mean, I think it would be great. Like I said, there was a ton of kids playing it up north um, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it'd be cool, even if we put it like on our five-year plan and, you know, to start off with. <laughs> yep. Commissioner Meller. 
Yeah, I, I have actually the five-year plan from 2012 to 2016 yeah. right now. And I do see that property um, on there. And, but I do not see an acreage. I was just double checking to see if there's an acreage on that, but I do see it on the, from 12 to 16 plan too, but no acreage next to it. So, but no, I think, I think it would be, I think it'd be a great idea. Mm -hmm. I agree. I like that. Cool. I will, I will I, then take, well, take that back wait. to council. I but, actually, so, I mean, I am a huge proponent that there should be something um, for adults to do at every park. When I had gone out and toured the parks that very blustery day that you were talking about <laughs> earlier, Councilman Winnewicki, um, I had a conversation with the mayor about getting horseshoe pits put in at Boris. And um, I was told that activities like that were hard to get past council because of liability issues. So that's one thing I just want to bring up is making sure everyone's thinking of the liability. And I was told that if we did have horseshoe pits at Boris that we couldn't leave the metal spikes in the ground. So I think that maybe something where there's discs flying all around, if they're worried about horseshoe pits that we might want to think about liability for disc golf also. Again, would love it, but um, you know, I think that we just have to be fair in where we're putting certain activities and think about the liability of it. Um, the other thing is I really have a hard time spending any money or doing anything right now as a parks and recreation department without doing something for the seniors. Um, I think that, you know, again, they were hit the hardest by COVID. We're still not, we don't have any activities for seniors. Um, and I know the seniors really liked pickleball. So I don't know how big this plot of land is or what the budget would be, but I mean, anything that we can do to consider the seniors and get that going and make that a big priority. Um, I'm on board for that. So that's my two cents. Um, it's my understanding for disc golf that they would be bringing their own discs. <laughs> I said that with the horseshoes too, just so you know, I did. Right. I was like, let's just, well, I said, let's just dig out the pits, you know, so that that way everyone could still have, it, it would still be there. Cause I think that there should be something at every park for adults to do. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Yeah. And I think, I think there should be an activity for adults. And then I also think there should be ample benches because there's nothing worse that, you know, me as a mom that I don't like than standing out in the hot sun, watching my kids play. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to sit somewhere. Um, but anyway, yeah, definitely agree that there should be something, but I think that also spreading the wealth and making sure that there's activity at all of the parks and then, you know, also anything that we can continue to do um, in South Fraser. I mean, we have um, um, McKinley, which is beautiful, but, you know, any other thing that we can get, you know, Pompo, McKinley to get, activities for grown-ups would be amazing. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, my all my citizens for participating. Um, item number 12, commission members with concerns. I'll start with Commissioner Cook. She's on the bottom of my screen. Okay, a couple of things. I would like to see um, the website updated to put the new commissioners' names on there because they still have old commissioner names on that website. So um, that would be nice to see our names on there is the one thing. And the other thing when I, I emailed you earlier today, Sarah, about talking about, I know it's a little far off, but we need to start something now for Halloween. And I was thinking about doing like, a Halloween trail through McKinley Park and maybe getting businesses around the area to come and pass out candy. So I was hoping that maybe um, Commissioner Hunt would help me out with that and hit up some businesses if it gets if people like the idea and um, seeing if they would like like to sponsor like a tent and they can promote their own business during that day too and then just have a walk going from probably like from 12 until four. Um, at the park and um, each each a company can you know or each business can set up their own tent and pass out candy and uh, we could charge probably like two dollars a person and maybe we can get bags made up with that with the two dollar donation for that 
and we can give each kid a bag when they come in. Um, and I thought maybe looking into something like that, cause you have to start planning for something like that now instead of like in October. So that was another idea that I came up with. That's a really um, good idea. If you need any help with that, let me know. I would be more than happy to help with that. And okay. um, last Same. year when we did the, um, the drive-through like trunk or treat mm -hmm. thing, we had um, people clamoring to donate. Right. So, you know, that's something too, where if you create like a, a flyer, put something out on social media, you, you know, you will, you probably get businesses to reach out to you. Um, right. I, do... I just think it'd be great for them to promote their business. They can even put yep. like business cards in the bag with their candy or, or whatever, but it just bring the community together and just set I... it all up around the trail. And we could just start at one end of the trail and just, you know, have them walk the whole trail to get their things. And then they just leave. I see the draw of doing it at McKinley too, because it is beautiful. The only thing I yeah. would caution you there is the parking. Parking could be really a problem. Yeah. So, so that's why we've usually done Halloween things at Stefan's, but that's just, you know, my two cents. I'm not going to rain on your parade. I, I love your idea and go with it. Mm -hmm. I would just say, consider Stefan's for the parking. If we can still try to figure out a way to do it in a trail though. Cause I love that idea. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I just like the, the trail idea. And that's, that's the only other park that really has a decent trail to walk around with some parking. And I figure if you do it from, you know, 12 until four, or even even set up times for people to come when they come and pick up our you know a wristband. We'll have to get like you know those little paper wristbands to give everybody who comes in and pays their two dollars, so that the people know passing out candy that the kids who have the wristbands are the ones that paid. Um, I just figure you know and maybe even just set up a time for them to come, and kind of break it up by times or something. I like that, Hunter. <laughs> I know this is the commissioners with concerns, but I just wanted to add, I did talk to Vince about um, doing Fall Fest this year since you brought up Halloween. Um, so I was going to start trying to plan something for that um, so we could actually have it this year since we not having a lot this year. <laughs> um, we do. Is that something that they could be kind of combined, Hunter? Like, is it, or are those like, two different usually fall fest is like the very beginning of october yeah it's the first, it's, oh, okay. the first week of october of october um it's, normally it's the and firefighter open house that day i'm sorry it's usually the firefighter open house that day yeah it's the fall fest firefighter um thing normally in the fire bay that they normally have um where they get all departments to go in the fire bay with the police department and the, the firefighters mm -hmm. So I was talking to Bisbee um, from public safety and he said it's mostly the volunteers. So he said uh, Mike Carnegie would be the person to contact. So I'm going to email Mike Carnegie and start planning that. So I was just about to tell you to email Mike. My yeah. husband's the, the VP of the paid on call firefighter. So I'll tell him too, so he can talk to Mike and maybe light a fire or some butts so we can get this going. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then I just had one more thing. I put a little survey out on Facebook and one of the Frasier sites and I was just asking people like seniors what they were looking for to do. Um, and there was like, they're looking at yoga, arts and crafts, playing cards, taking trips, you know, like to the casino or to the DIA or, or something. They're really interested in doing stuff like that. And then the kids programs, I had a lot of interest in arts and crafts, t-ball or dance, flag football, and then mom and me dances or dance classes were like the big hits out there. All right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Meller. Yes. Um, no concerns. I'm looking forward to um, fireworks and uh, the picnic, but uh, thanks for the update on the path at Pompo. I've had, I live right behind it or in front of it, wherever you want to say, it. but I know a lot of people have been asking, you know, they cleared the path and, you know, they haven't laid it down yet and they still have the do not enter signs up there. So uh, you said this week, so um, I will let uh, people know. So I'm looking forward to having that done and be able to uh, walk and get on my electric bike and go on the path. 
That's it. All right, thank you. Commissioner Hunt. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, as far as, I just wanted to say this publicly, um, as far as that photo contest that we had a, a couple months ago, actually, I think two, uh, we had 10 winning participants. Uh, mostly families, but we did have a few singles out there. And um, I wanted to say thank you to the sponsors, of course, the Parks and Rec, who contributed to the gift card fund. Dairy Maid um, donated gift cards, Grill House, Coney Island, Ram's Horn, Vic's Diner, and commissioners David Bogdan and myself also donated um, gift cards, uh, you know, from the local restaurants so we could have prizes. And um, the post, the pictures are posted um, on that hashtag Fraser Parks and Rec Photo Rally 2021. If anybody's interested in seeing the families that, that participated, um, the one mile walk. Um, I didn't go last week. I was out of town, but Chris was there. Um, it seems to be getting um, pretty well received. Um, we're going to be visiting our fourth park this Thursday. It's going to be at Somerset. We'll start at 7.30. And um, I realized the parks were originally meant for neighborhoods only, but I'm really interested in getting them accessible to all the residents of the city. Um, an interesting uh, conversation I had with um, an older couple that joined us a few weeks ago. They moved in in 1962 and they came for the walk and they had never heard of, seen or been to Blanky Park and they loved it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great little, little park over there. So I wanted to say that. Um, and as far as, I do have a question on those signs. Um, so, so they're gonna be all uniform, but, and that's a great idea. So, but Harrington and Blanky, I noticed they had like huge, huge signs. Will those then be taken down and replaced so that all the parks, because I still think that's a great idea, take them down and make it all the same. But I'm just wondering if they were going to get some flack by the people that put those nice, pretty signs up. So I don't know what was, the, just asking what's the plan on that. No, the, the consistency lies in in all of the parks having the same type of sign, the same design. Okay. And also as you enter the city at different points, there's the welcome to Frasier signs. Mm -hmm. And so all of the signs will be designed to be very consistent like that. If you go through communities like uh, Birmingham and Bloomfield and Royal Oak, uh, you'll see that type of consistency throughout their parks. They might have little nuances that are different that for each individual park, but uh, those are just little minor changes. But the main theme of the signage is what we're looking for to be consistent uh, to, to represent the city uh, as a whole. Yes. Okay. Are those, so are those two parks, Harrington and Blanky, are those going to kind of go along with whatever is yes. already picked up? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Because I was a little worried about that. Because those are, they're beautiful. They're a little over the top, but they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I know that Councilwoman Blanky um, really loves the sign at Blanky Park, and that the flag was in honor of her husband's mm -hmm. service. Right. So, not I'm not. Hey, I'm not dissing it. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. Like I can recall. Yeah. I can recall. She recently <laughs> said that in a council meeting. So, okay. right. The only reason I bring it up. Okay, I think um, I think that's all I had. I'll let I'll let my other stuff go. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Rollins. I don't have anything. <laughs> all right, <laughs> um, Commissioner Sutherland. Okay, let me get my list out. <laughs> so um, the first thing I would like um, feedback from you guys. So. We weren't charging fees for the farmer's market this year. And one of the things we were going to do is in lieu of fees is the vendors were, you know, it's completely optional, but they could donate an item to raffle off. So it kind of went back and forth where we thought that we were going to have to work with the Michigan lottery as to whether or not we'd be able to do a raffle with the city. It sounds now like we are going to be able to do a raffle, 
we still have some raffle items that vendors have donated like the first couple of markets. But at this point, I'm wondering if it would just be a better idea to kind of hold off and maybe at the September market, um, do a giant raffle with everything that's been, um, that the vendors have donated and advertise it that way, like have a vendor raffle to get more people out. And the reason why I was thinking September, it's after Labor Day, more people will be back in town. The traffic was definitely not as high at the last market as it was the first one, even though the weather was much better. We'll see how it goes this weekend. But I just kind of wanted to get you guys' thoughts on whether you thought we should do a bunch of small raffles or one giant raffle. I like the idea of, of one big one. I think that's a, <clears throat> I think that's a great idea, personally. I think it, okay. it really builds up the um, excitement about it. And like you said, I think September um, is, is the best time, you know, that one to do it at. So I, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. I agree. Same. I agree too. I think one big one would be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for your feedback. I'm glad to hear that. All right. So then we will plan that for September. I'll make sure I get everything together. It'll give me some time to plan too. Um, and bug hunter some more. Um, let's you don't see. bug me. <laughs> Aw, thanks. Um, the other thing was, so recently um, I was at Somerset Pool and that was, Hunter had mentioned earlier about the graffiti getting cleaned up at the park. Um, another concern that um, I was talking to Linda, the owner of Somerset Pool, and she was talking about how, um, because the park is right next door, that a lot of times that people will come over and ask if they can use the restroom at the pool. And obviously, if you're not a member, you know, due to liability, she can't just let, you know, people come in and use the pool because there's risk involved there. So I had sent an email to Hunter um, asking about um, having a uh, porta potty put in at Somerset. Um, but I just wanted to ask in here because I mean, it is a concern of mine. And I mean, it sounds like it's happening a lot. Um, like how we go about getting that, can we get that on the city council agenda for the next meeting? Like, does it have to go through that level of approval? Like how could, how could we get that to happen? Because it makes sense to put one there, I think. And I think that it would be a huge help because I mean, there's so many more people going to that park now mm -hmm. um, and hanging out. So I really think that it would be a good idea to put one there. I was told that it was supposed to be passed by council to get a um, quarter potty put at the park for Somerset. Is there something that we need to do here? Like, do we need to make a motion to have something like that happen to get it put on the agenda mm -hmm. for council? Um. Dave, David, <laughs> you know more than me. <laughs> I was waiting that one more second before yeah. I jumped in. <laughs> He's looking at you. <laughs> I would say that, yes, you make that request through Vince and Hunter to, okay. uh, to uh, place that on uh, as an agenda item or a request of city council to... Uh, consider placing a porta potty at that particular part. Uh, okay. So you you do have at McKinley you do have working restrooms at Stephens you have working restrooms, but now you also have to consider that once we do that, uh, if we do that um, uh, at Somerset, you also have to consider that we may have to once the parks are complete at Bo at uh, Boris Meadows and Arrington. Right. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that will be something that and and, and Pompo. And so that will be something that that will take uh council will take under consideration. Yep. I think that it, I mean I completely hear what you're saying. I think Somerset's just kind of in a unique situation because mm -hmm. it's not tucked into a neighborhood like the other parks are where people might be coming from their house, they could run back home, you know, it's right. it's a little it's a little bit unique, um, especially because it does have the pool right there. And, and people ask to use their restroom. So, but okay. So then it sounds like I'm on the right track with already sending the request to Hunter to get that put um, 
on the city council agenda. The other thing was, I don't know if you guys recall, but it was not the last meeting, but the meeting before, and I apologize, I can't recall her name, but there was someone from Fraser Public Library who came and talked about donating a little free library to Somerset. Mm -hmm. And I had emailed Mark um, to have that put on the agenda because having the little free library put at Somerset also needs to be approved by council. So I was just wondering if anybody knows the status of that because I was at the park and I didn't see it. So I didn't know if it ever got put on the agenda. Um, it, it was it was not on the council agenda, no. Okay, so I think that right now we have a little free library in waiting and it would be really great. I think we did make a motion on that item and um, it was approved. I took it as a takeaway to send the email. I did that, it didn't get on the agenda. So how do we get it on the agenda for the next council meeting? Um, Cause that to me, this should be, you know, pretty quick, easy hitter, at least to get on the agenda. It's a little free library that the public library wants to donate to Somerset. That they'll maintain. Right. Um, I, how do we get, how do we get that on the agenda for council? I do think that there was a, um, a little blip because I didn't have minutes or a recording from May. So yes, had I right. known, <laughs> had I known about that, I would have put that in minutes, and then it was. That's okay. <laughs> it happens. I emailed it too, though. I did oh. just so is that cool? So, um, all right. So then, email again. I assume it would be like the same for the porta potties that you'd have to go through Vince and have Vince request for that to be put on the council agenda. I will resend my email. Okay. Um, the other thing is, so, you know, we we're talking, or I was talking earlier about getting something going for seniors. Um, and I know that Vince has been a proponent of volunteers and getting volunteers to do things for seniors. So I would be happy to start and volunteer doing something for seniors, even if we had a tent put up in the senior center parking lot or something like that. I was thinking like a Sunday, like a bingo brunch or something like that. Um, but if anybody wants to maybe form a subcommittee or get with me on that, I'd be more than willing to volunteer my time to go and call bingo at the senior center starting as soon as whenever we can come up with a plan. I'm, I'm very interested in helping with that. Who said that? Cause my camera. Sunny. I would help too, Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> All right. So Amanda and Chris. All right. All right. All right. So we'll get together and we'll talk about what that looks like. I'll help also. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Hunter. Sorry, I couldn't get my computer unmuted fast enough. So <laughs> Can I just show up on the day and you give me a job? <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks. I think. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so then I just wanted to ask uh, Councilman Winnewicki, you had said that the equipment was taken out of the parks, but that there was a fire. At, at the plant where they make the equipment was the fire i thought that the fire happened after the equipment was already taken out that is correct that's okay, why so such, that, that's why there's such a delay in in getting the equipment delivered and installed and the best the the, the most recent report that we've received is that we're still about two weeks out before we get the equipment. Right. No, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I understand what you're saying as far as timeline. I guess I was just thinking that if we wouldn't, uh, maybe it would have been better to leave it in until we had a for sure delivery date. I mean, things happen. I was just thinking through and wanted to get my timeline right. Um, and then the other thing with the signs, so we had already approved signs, I wanna say about a year and a half ago. Um, were, those, were those approved signs ever presented to council? The, the formal package, no, was not presented to council as a whole, no. 
Okay. So even though there was a package out there, uh, it, there was just a whole whole juggling act that went on with the, with the signs that never came before council for a vote. Yeah. Well, and I know that there was some turnover at that time. Um, so that mm -hmm. is, it's unfortunate because we did have, you know, we had it all together. So it just seems like a lot of unfortunate rework, but right. just curious. All right. Thank you. I'm, mm -hmm. oh, and I did just want to give one more shout out to Hunter because Hunter is awesome and she helps me with everything. <laughs> and I'm really grateful that our city has her because she's working really hard with and has a positive attitude. And I really appreciate everything that Hunter is doing. So thank you again, Hunter, for everything. You're welcome. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, you are. You're doing a great job. You always answer everybody's questions and and you're you're on top of everything. Yeah, you really are. It's Thanks. amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. See, we do notice, Hunter. <laughs> Um, all right. I, are you all set, Dana? Yes, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess it just leaves me. Um, I will try to be more proactive with posting online. I do, I usually do post all of our meetings online and tell people to join. This month I've been a little lax. No, past two months I've kind of been a little lax, but I will try to be more proactive at posting online so more people can know. Um, I have been trying to recruit for the open seat, but so far I've had no luck. So I guess I gotta make more noise online to get people to apply. So <laughs> um, other than that, that's it. I don't really have anything else to say. So um, that leaves <clears throat> us with item number. Oh God, Commissioner Cook, go ahead. We just have one more question. Is it safe for me to go ahead and post something on Facebook to let people know about the food truck rally now? I would think yes, but Hunter would answer that, could answer that question. <laughs> yes. Um, with the only thing is, is the, the charges for the food truck, like what we're going to charge the food trucks. Um, it has to go in front of council with the um, the upcoming bud budget. What is it? Um, it's slipping my mind. The come on. <laughs> come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come uh, on. <laughs> for everything to the for the Jesus, I can't really think of it. They have to be the prices have to be approved by council in right. our um, what's the packet? The, the fees. Yes, the fees. thank you. The fees. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I knew, I knew it. But <laughs> they so have hard to do. <laughs> there's going to be other fees besides the fees for the city permit. Um, if we're, are we doing a cornhole tournament or are we just having cornhole boards? No, out? I think I think a tournament would be just way too much to to do all in one day, but I just think having cornhole and maybe that giant um, connect four game out there for the kids to play with would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, I have a little list um, that I was going to email. I think I did email it over to you or I have it where I'm going to email yeah, it. I, I didn't see that list. Nope. Um, to some ideas that we could do. Um, I know okay. that I did talk to Derek from the Fraser Lions Club and he got me in contact with Nicole um, about possibly getting a beer tent there. Um, I'll have to reach back out to her and see, and then I'll email you over or email you over the information I get. And then okay. I'll email you over this list. I just want to put like save the date, you know, kind of thing. Like we're going to have, you know, this food truck, these food trucks here, we're going to do, you know, this time where it's going to be at just kind of getting out there. So people see it. That's all I want to know if I can do that. Yeah. Crystal, I mean, Crystal, yeah, we have the food trucks booked for that day. So the last okay. meeting that we were in, and I just want to be careful because the last meeting we were in, when I was talking about putting the farmer's market flyer out, Vince said that he wanted final approval on the communications before we post them and put them out. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm on the, I'm in the midst of making a flyer. I kind of made one, but then it told me it needed, 
I had to pay for it. And I'm like, I got to figure a way around without having to pay for it. So are you yeah, talking about Canva? Really, Let me know because I yeah. accidentally signed up for a subscription to that. I pay $13 a month now. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I was making one on. And it says, sorry, you got to pay for this. And I'm like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I don't want to pay. I just want to make a flyer and I was going to send it to Hunter and then put it out there. So yes. I would think that you could probably like post an actual post with no flyer and say, Hey, guess what might be coming to the city of Fraser? Yes. September. Okay. That's what That's I wanted perfect. to do. Something like that too. And then I was going to take some flyers once it gets approved and put them in shots and put them around different businesses around the area to, um, you know, as people walking in and out, we'll see it too. Because I think our publicity for things is not very good here. I think a lot of people don't know about things until after they happen. And then they say, how come we didn't know that that happened? Right. <laughs> I want to try to avoid that. Do you know how many times I've heard in the past couple of months, Frazier is a farmer's market? <laughs> yeah. There's a many lot. things I hear. Like, many times. Oh, you guys are doing this? Or, oh, you had a photo rally? Or, oh, you did, you know, you did a bunny thing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right, I th any more questions from anyone? All right, I think we can move on to item number 13, adjournment. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, jinx. I I'll second make a motion. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motion made by Commissioner Sutherland, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor? Aye. 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 And at 8.17 PM. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you, bye. guys. See you at the Have a great weekend. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.